Hello, my name is Marcel Feldman, and uh, well, welcome here on a Saturday morning. And we're here to uh, to talk about photography, instant photography. But uh, I would like to have uh, uh, give you an introduction to what I do aside from shooting instant photography and Polaroid photos. Um, I shoot uh, I shoot a lot of things, but I shoot uh, the exciting world of uh, of skateboarding. Uh, that's probably 50% of my work these days. And uh, as you can see, it's super exciting every day. Like, uh, uh, so this is all what you expect to see uh, uh, this morning. But yeah, no, skateboarding, um, uh, to me, uh, I, I, started, uh, I started when I was 14, 15, and skateboarding and photography always went hand in hand. Um, you can't really take a, a great skateboard photo if you don't really know what's up and uh, if, you, if you can't skate, basically. But these art forms, and to me, skateboarding is an art form and, um, um, because you look at your environment much differently, like uh, so. I shoot action shots of skateboarding as well. Um, but to me, it's, uh, uh, it's hand in hand. It's, uh, it, skateboarding comes from a do-it-yourself background, and uh, you can't have other people uh, uh, wait on others to do uh, something for you that you can do yourself. You know, just, just uh, do it yourself. It's a creative mindset, attitude. I shoot these photos uh, all over the world, and as a community in skateboarding, uh, you have an instant connection no matter where you go and no matter what background, um, the thing that, glue, that glues everything together is, uh, is the skateboard. And it's a free outlook on the world. I know these days skateboarding is also a, a sport because it's in the Olympic uh, Games. But to me, it, it, it stays uh, the, the, the creative outlet as I uh, grew up uh, doing. Well, I, sh uh, um, I mostly shoot, uh, I shoot tricks. That's why I travel uh, the world. I shoot uh, the skateboarding in action. But to me, um, and not only to me, but skateboarding as a whole is the community feeling and not only um, uh, the tricks. And to put that um, in, in contrast, uh, in, in perspective, um, we always look at our environment in a different way because uh, the, the, um, the city and the streets are a playground. It's not made for anything uh, um, like we do uh, as skateboarders. Um, so we look at a bench and an handrail and a staircase much differently. And in that, in that way, we also uh, expand on that in other levels in our lives, uh, being uh, uh, if you art or photography and stuff. Um, so, skateboarding brings happiness to all over, and it's an instant uh, um, connection. Uh, wherever you go, it's always a talking point. We, we go uh, on many different places in the street, and it's always very entertaining uh, to see the, the um, interaction between people we come across. But like you see, like a normal bike rack, uh, people walk past it like a million times a day and you don't even notice it, you know? So, uh, so in that sense, it's, um, to me, I look at photography in, in the same way, you know? Like uh, uh, I, I like to take uh, either uh, really crazy uh, opportuni uh, opportunities um, and take a picture or like dull moments and uh, elevate that into a, a, a a nice photograph, or at least what I think it's a, a nice photograph, and I can only do uh, uh, what I can do. Well, skateboarding is a, is a worldwide community, as I said before, and it comes from all backgrounds and uh, in every country, and it's, 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 it's a really, I, I love it, it's a really creative and inclusive environment, uh, especially these days. And even on the top of the Etna, you can find uh, something to skate, which is not... Uh, uh. But like, uh, this is a good example. People don't even... Uh, 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 Non-skateboarders, even though uh, you might even be wearing uh, skate shoes, to be honest. 
just walking past, but you see the, 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 the possibilities that, uh, that the, urban, uh, uh, so the urban environment uh, gives us. And in that way, um, a lot of uh, um, people participating in skateboarders or skateboarders are, have an open mindset about uh, other facets and uh, other uh, issues in life. But as much as they're uh, uh, really focused on the board, off the board, it can go uh, all directions. I like taking pictures at night as well. Like, I like to document the whole scene and not, I don't know if it's coming from uh, uh, where the necessity is coming from. This is, this is my world as well, so I always carry a camera and I show, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take these pictures from the inside out. Well, this is the, the rode draad, as we call it in Dutch. There's a lot of uh, dull moments, but even in these moments you find something uh, beautiful. Uh. But then again, you can go uh, the complete opposite direction in the same day. Great mention as uh, um, this is a, a, a girl, Louisa. Uh, she's from my hometown. One of the best girl skaters uh, and the Netherlands has to offer. Did, did, this picture is taken actually 21 years ago, I realized uh, today, which is insane. Um, I accidentally uh, uh, stumbled upon a camera because uh, I just look at uh, my friend. He's right here. Uh, I always wanted to have like a professional camera, but I never had the money. And my friend's like, hey, I got a camera and uh, you want to buy it? I was like, well, you know. And he gave me a decent price, so I, I bought it. Thank you, uh, Arjon. Uh, well, I can point at you. <laughs> there, this guy. <laughs> and from there on, I, uh, I started documenting our scene. I think this was in uh, 1999, I would say, more, uh, most likely. But you know, like you can you can shoot uh, skateboard tricks as a whole, but you know, there's there's very different ways to approach uh, uh, taking a picture. You know, like you have to really uh, be aware of of everything else, uh, what you can do. Like, just don't go for the obvious. Sometimes the obvious is the way to go. But I like to stray uh, different paths. This is one of my favorite photos. Uh, it's a great skateboard trick, and a skateboarder uh, would know what kind of trick is hidden behind that person, just uh, of the arms and the position of his uh, behind, let's put it like that. You know? But to me, this, this is uh, uh, photography as well. It's these moments that you cannot uh, expect and uh, always be ready, and I like, I like stuff that happens uh, just because it happens which is capturing uh, real life. And you can play around with, uh, with other stuff. But um, I just flipped through this real quick because we're here for uh, the instant photography, but just so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, peer pressure is uh, really nice in skateboarding too, you know, like... Um, <laughs> but he was fine <laughs> after he slammed. But, um, yeah, this, this, uh, this, this picture on the left is taken in uh, Morocco. The other one is in, uh, I think it was in Sao Paulo. But it's a, it's a global uh, community of, of, of uh, like-minded uh, individuals. Uh, I would like to express that, that these are all individuals and everybody can do and, and, and what they want. But the connection is skateboarding and the open mindset to it. And uh, you have instant friends all over the world that's how I traveled for uh, many, uh, many years, couch touring on uh, But aside from all the tricks, this is uh, for me uh, maybe just as interesting, if not more interesting than just the action uh, itself. I like the, the, the moments in life and we're here to talk about capturing real life. Well, this is my life and there's some examples here on the table, which is, I don't know, like, uh, you can call them uh, extensive uh, diaries, uh, I realized. So it's not all fun and games. You have to pay the price uh, sometimes for your efforts. 
But uh, if you land a trick, uh, here we go. <coughs> this is what we do most of the day. Wait for uh, other stuff while I'm waiting for somebody to uh, land a trick. And it's funny because uh, as much as they are focused, and I can talk uh, about uh, everything, uh, all the skateboarders in general, but as much as they are focused on the board, it's, um, they can also get really loose when they're uh, off the board in various uh, ways. But as you can see, this is maybe uh, one good example of uh, how to... Uh, uh, Use your surroundings uh, differently than uh, most people, I would say. Or even uh, on the inside. Oh, seven o'clock in the morning, I see. <laughs> and it's all, uh, all downhill from here. So this is uh, what I do in a, in, a, in a heartbeat, and then we end with the uh, most... Uh, the rode draad, uh, I would say. This is what happens. I'm not sure if it's the most comfortable positions, but like, like I said, capturing real life, this is, this is the stuff that happens, and this is just here uh, while I'm turning my back and I'm shooting something else. I always carry a different camera around. Uh. And now we get to the real point here, um, Polaroid photography or instant photography. Um, the connection is... Uh, is there? I, I really enjoyed uh, um, uh, shooting skateboarding and uh, instant uh, uh, photos uh, combined. Um, when I bought my first uh, Polaroid camera, I, I think it was 99 or 2000, and in, especially in, in that day and age, I feel like a dinosaur at this moment. But uh, there was no digital uh, cameras, and you had. And you had to develop your stuff, and this was instant uh, satisfaction. You can grab something, and uh, a photograph is not really a photograph unless you, you can touch it and feel it and you know, maybe smell it. I like the, the paper. And, uh, so instant photography and Polaroid photographs are, um, um, are really useful for that. And also you have an, a different connection with people uh, you, sh you take these pictures of because... Um, in that time, it was like instant development and no, nobody was scrolling on their phones or anything. And in this day and age, it's, it's nice to not scroll on your phone and have something uh, instantly come out of your camera. Uh, it takes a few minutes to, uh, to get these uh, developed. Um, but I've used this uh, process um, all over. This is, this, I think this, is, this, this picture is 20 years old. This is shot last year. So for action shots, uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, you, you kind of break all the rules because, uh, especially with the camera I used uh, on the left side and uh, probably on the right side too, there was no such thing as uh, uh, shutter priority or shutter speed or uh, uh, stuff like that. But I like I like the motion blur. So you can break. <coughs> sorry. So you can break all the rules if you want. That, that's what photography is for, you know, there's no set of rules in shooting uh, anything. Uh, if it goes for normal pictures or uh, instant photography, you know, there's, there's, uh, sometimes here you can't do this and you have to watch this, but I would say learn those things and then forget them all and do exactly what you want and feel uh, uh, what you think is uh, necessary. Um, the picture on the right is shot in like 2001. <coughs> And the picture on the left is shot uh, last year. So let's see, uh, there's, those are 22 years apart. But it documents um, the whole scene. This is shot uh, last year. But it was like this, you know, this guy was walking around with, uh, uh, with a skateboard. It was like uh, Andy's uh, shoes. I'm sure people know the name. I always forget the name. I have to, I have to Google it. But... Uh, a pretty, uh, pretty funny setup. And the same as this, um, there's still a lot of waiting going on, but even in dull moments, I, I find something uh, interesting uh, to shoot. If you get maybe the right composition or the right angle, or even uh, on this one, the motion blur, and you know people 
talking uh, big stories, like uh, catch this big fish in the back, I think. But I'm not trying to explain uh, all the pictures that, that, that you see here today because I really like to have your uh, own imagination of what's going on. I don't really, it's like an artist or um, that, that explains their lyrics and then they ruin their song, you know, like uh, the one that I listened to for like 20 years and then it's like, oh no, it's about this. I'm like, oh my God, that <laughs> sucks. So I can't listen to the song anymore. So I document, uh, uh, it depends on what camera I carry, but um, uh, this, this is just a Polaroid in my, uh, probably in my pocket or around my shoulder, and uh, I just, just catch these moments as they are. Ah, that's my uh, pride and joy on the left. That's my son, which is always a good subject, uh, especially if he starts skateboarding now. That's his... Uh, Little older friend on the on the right dash, really good skateboarder here in Amsterdam. These are shot uh, last year, so you see a contrast uh, between the pictures from back in the day and from uh, uh, recently. But instant photography and, and skateboarding, um, they're both like an art form. You know, like if you shoot an instant photo, it's an original. You know, that, that there's only one of one of a kind. It's, it's you can touch it, and it, it's the one. You know, it's a piece of art on their own no matter uh, what you do with that. And uh, you can't really expect uh, the outcome, which is really great, um, because I like to let things go. And sometimes, you know, it's, uh, uh, you take it on a, on a bicycle like that and you get the motion blur. Um, this one I shot with a, with a um, SX-70 camera that I remodeled to take 600 film, because at, at points uh, there was no SX-70 film anymore, and I uh, got the SX-70 camera for cheap, 20 bucks. I think these days they go for uh, much more than that. So I bought a couple of those and I modified them with an and <coughs> ND filter as something to, uh, to take the battery, the, the film pack in. And, uh, but the, the camera is great. And up until that point, it was probably one of the best uh, uh, Polaroid cameras. But you find uh, stuff uh, everywhere. That's uh, Louisa again, uh, really great artist uh, by herself uh, these days as well. But you see as a community, uh, skateboarders, uh, we, we, we do a lot of things ourselves. We make our own uh, books, we make our own uh, films, um, uh, our own art, if it's on the skateboards or not. Like uh, It's a very creative and open space uh, uh, to thrive and to let your uh, things go. And now, uh, on contrast, there's uh, uh, Olympic, Olympic Games, like I mentioned before, uh, which is also great. It turns into a sport, but it also attracts uh, 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 a different uh, uh, mindset uh, people, which is not bad at all. Um, but it changes the game. So I'm, I'm curious how it will turn out over maybe the next decade and see what it does to the sub subculture of skateboarding. Um, or the culture of skateboarding, is nothing really sub about this uh, anymore because you can walk in any uh, shopping street and you see a skateboard in the window. Or uh, uh, This is uh, 22 years ago also, like a professional skateboarder signing. But it's great, as in all photography, it's, it's great to see. I, I like to shoot people because... Um, People change the most, you know, you can shoot a building, but the building will probably most likely be the same in 10, 20 years. And I find beauty in, in buildings and, and, and still life stuff as well, but people change, you know, like uh, people change a lot, they grow older. And especially if you see some of these books, uh, you see them grow up um, in a way, because most of these uh, people I meet uh, are when they were very young, up until like, uh, well, till today. And I just document their lives, and you see them uh, progress or not progress. It de depends on the people. Some some people, it's a thin line, uh, the road we call life, and you can easily fall off uh, the beam. I broke my foot this day. Actually, I tried to ollie uh, this gap. <laughs> I had to, uh, and, and this guy was very happy you could drive my uh, van. Was, uh, he was so psyched. Uh, oh, I'm driving a van, I can't believe this today. It's like, well, I was in the back seat with a cast till my knee, which was 
really tight and had to cut it off. But that's a different story. So uh, this year we went to, to Copenhagen um, where, um, with uh, Polaroid as well, and we had a, a small exhibition. And the community of skateboarding as a whole, and here's a good example also for you. You can combine uh, a lot of Polaroids to make one image. Uh, it's not that this is especially maybe one image because it's like a, but you can combine multiple uh, uh, Polaroids to obtain uh, one final image. This I shot uh, also with the SX-70. Um, um, you can get really close. You can get uh, up until like 30 centimeters. And I like, I like to shoot close pictures. It gets you a different perspective of, uh, of your subject. And especially if the light is amazing, then... Uh, as you can tell, uh, skateboarders don't walk around with a lot of uh, clothes. I wish the weather was uh, that great again. But, and here we get back uh, now on an on instant uh, format to what we do uh, most, like laying down and use the skateboard as a pillow. But there's a lot of waiting, there's a lot of effort in, uh, in doing the stuff that they do. So over the years, I started uh, Fluff Magazine, and um, uh, I started it in probably in like 2000. We, we uh, made the first issue. And it's a documentation of skateboarding and the skateboarding culture. And uh, unlike uh, most of the magazines at the time, um, it, it captured the whole essence of it. You know, I like, I like life. I like uh, to see people. I like uh, situations, etc. But it was never uh, a normal uh, format. Uh, uh, the one on the right, for instance, a few of these balls and their faces are scratch and sniff and smells like bubblegum. I couldn't really uh, uh, find the issue really quick, so I, I don't have it here, but it still smells uh, naughty. And I think the issue was, came out 20 years ago. Somebody uh, uh, told me, it's like, oh, it's great. Uh, I put it in the bathroom because it's... Uh, well, for, for those reasons. This is the first one. It, it, it's, it's still a magazine, but uh, we switched to a hardcover on this. It's, we, we change formats all the time because like, uh, like photography and like all art forms, I don't really want to, uh, we don't really uh, want to repeat ourselves. At least I don't. Or if you want to repeat it, well, I'll take that back because sometimes if you repeat yourself over and over again, you make a nice collection of everything the same, but slightly different. That's like I said, all these rules that I'm telling you, you can forget about it straight away. There's no rules. This one we made, uh, all, the, all, the, um, all the pages are, uh, it's a Japanese folding uh, way. I don't know how you pronounce this in, uh, in, in English, but, uh, sorry? Origami. Is it origami? Yeah. I don't know, that's uh, like the folding uh, of uh, swans and stuff, right? Or I'm not sure if this is called the same way, but is it? No, right? Ah, I should have done uh, more uh, research, but it's it's been a while since I finished. Uh, we finished this, and once I finished it, I don't really pick it up because I I can't change it anymore. <coughs> Which is great. That's why I like paper uh, as a whole. You know, you can have websites and, and documentation online, but you can alter stuff. You know, the the the, the books we have here or the magazines we have here. Um, this is it, it's a moment in time, it's an era, you can't change uh, uh, the language nor the pictures or anything. Uh, it is what it is and it documents an era in, in life. But you had to open these pages and I got an email from a, from a friend once like, oh, I gave my father 10 euros and I went skating and uh, I came home and he opened up all the pages. I thought I was pretty smart and lazy at the same time. But. So a few uh, more covers and then we get to uh, uh, do it yourself, you know, like um, if, if somebody, you can't wait on other people to do it for you, you know, like uh, if you really want to have your stuff published or, or if you take photos and you want to do something, uh, um, you want to show the world aside from, uh, from on a website, uh, make your own zine, make your own, uh, go to the photocopy place and, and start making your own zine. 
<coughs> this is the extra level of this. You know, we, we made, I think these are like uh, nine zines or something. We glued them all together. Uh, there's an example on the table. You can, you're free to touch everything that's on the table uh, later after this. And it's fluff gut issues and it's a bunch of issues. They're all like different subjects, but it's coming from the DIY, do it yourself background. Um, like, I want to really express, don't wait on anybody else. You, you can't wait, life's too short, do it yourself. And you can do it exactly the way you want as well. So it grew from, uh, from this is still a magazine, but slightly bigger. It's got uh, 1,826 uh, pages. It's uh, five years uh, in days, 1,826. And it's uh, five years that I traveled on the road in, with Nike in this, this instance. Um, there's a copy of that as well. There's a few tricks in there on the pages, but 1,826, you gotta be quick. So this one is uh, also on the table, and we used, uh, uh, I traveled uh, all of Europe for a year and a half, and I documented all the athletes that, uh, or the athletes, all the riders, the skateboarders that um, were riding for uh, Nike at the time. This is, um, uh, and I brought my Polaroid camera with me to shoot all their portraits on the various backgrounds. So I already, uh, sometimes it's instant moments, but sometimes I, I go, uh, go out with a plan. And uh, in this case, I really wanted to have this, this mosaic feeling of all these uh, people, except for the ones that I couldn't find. But, um, and have them in the pages, uh, uh, in the book, uh, in the start and in the beginning. Uh, uh, and at, at the end. Uh, this is also an issue where we uh, incorporated uh, uh, a lot of Polaroid photos. Uh, here you can see like uh, in between all the skateboard tricks and stuff, I like, I like something uh, contrasty. So uh, instant film for me, that's a, that's a perfect way to do this. Uh, it gives you an example of, of the, the free life or the, the something else aside from the actual act of skateboarding in this, uh, in this case. And you can compile it, like I said before, um, you can compile this as, um, um, as one image. You, so you take a few uh, Polaroids and, and put them all together and, and make one image. You know, it's like not just one photograph. Uh, this is one collected photograph. And like, these as well. And you really can give uh, an essence to, to, to the story uh, published uh, in the book. And sometimes it can be quite tricky if you really want to, I know I'm not the first one to do it, but uh, feel free even in the workshop uh, uh, later on, please remind yourself that you, you have one image, but you can also have multiple images to create uh, one image. Uh, I'm ex especially proud of these because the lines kind of line up pretty, pretty straight. And there's uh, like it's instant photography. This is not done in Photoshop or anything. This is uh, uh, turning around and then hope like, okay, the tree stops there. Through a um, rangefinder camera, um, I don't know if any, everybody of you knows what, uh, anybody of you knows what the rangefinder is, but that's not like looking through the lens. So you're gonna have to like uh, wing it a little bit if you wanna adjust some lines. Well, <coughs> I had another uh, purpose for Polaroid uh, pictures back in the day. Um, I had a spot book. So it was in my van. Uh, so all the skaters were in my van. It's like, oh, where, we should, where, where should we skate these days? I gave them my phone and all the spots are in my phone. But years ago, I had a, a big album in my, uh, in my uh, car and uh, I gave them this. It's like, hey, which one do you want to skate? And it's actually uh, over the year, it, it was just a useful uh, thing for me at the, at the time. But right now, look at, uh, well, I personally look at these, uh, and uh, most of these spots are already gone, unskatable or skate stopped. You know, like it's still uh, illegal to skate on a lot of uh, places, even though they, they really like it. Um, one other example, like you see here, I had a Hasselblad uh, uh, camera, and I shot a, a test, test photo with my Polaroid uh, back. And which at that time was, was, was great because you could 
tell if there was something in the way or something uh, arm out of the frame or uh, something like that. But I could also connect with the skateboarder uh, uh, who was doing the trick and I give them the Polaroid and I still have people come up to me. It's like, oh, I still have the Polaroids from that moment. And to them it was really special because it's a printed, um, a printed item. So this is what was one of the, the spots. It's, uh, I don't know if you're familiar in Amsterdam. This was in Utrecht. Uh, it's now in Amsterdam, by the way, um, really uh, weirdly enough. This, this I shot like years ago, I think this 20 years ago, and then 12 years later I shot this photo. Um, probably one of the gnarliest tricks to ever uh, uh, been, on, uh, been done on this. It's really wobbly, it feels like it's bolted uh, um, with one screw. And actually, this is one uh, one book to to check out. It's not only uh, it's not not something I made. It's my uh, my friend Rafael Zarka. He uh, curated this book, and it's an um, it's a collection of photographs on 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 metal sculptures all over the world from various photographers. Uh, I was uh, had, uh, lucky enough to 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 get the cover of this, but it's really really uh, interesting, and it's an ongoing exhibition. I don't, I don't know if he still does that, but uh, the book had just a reprint, so it's, it's, it's available. Uh, it's, it's really, um, in this book it's kind of funny, because um, some of the, the um, uh, some of the estates or the artists didn't give permission to have their stuff printed or skated on, so the pages are uh, blank and they have only the, the caption underneath. But most of them, lucky enough, um, they really uh, appreciated <coughs> the way we, <coughs> sorry, the way we used uh, 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 their their artwork uh, because they they saw a whole different po uh, possibilities. At some spots, spots even the architects uh, show up and they go like, "Oh, great! I didn't have uh, th this in mind." And, uh, great, you guys use it this way, and uh, the architect is super happy, but then the owner is like uh, not so happy because. Uh, <laughs> it gets slightly damaged. Instant photography is also really great um, because it's physical, just need a Sharpie, and sometimes, uh, you know, one gets stuck in the rollers, and, uh, but there's, there's nothing, uh, there's no waste, you know, I, I don't like throwing away stuff. And this is Petar, my friend Petar, and he's also uh, an artist. And I just gave him a Sharpie and a filled Polaroid, right? and you can do whatever you want. Also, you can collect uh, autographs. Um, I do this for, uh, for a purpose, like uh, um, not, well, it's also cool to have an autograph of uh, Tony Hawk, maybe the most famous skateboarder in the world. But um, I'm working on, uh, on uh, an item in an upcoming uh, uh, new fluff uh, issue. And it's cool that they have their own um, uh, identity on that, um, on that specific uh, uh, photograph. These are slightly older. I think these are already 20 years uh, uh, ago, shot 20 years ago. These guys uh, don't look the same at all. Still really great skateboarders. And maybe uh, you know this guy. Really good skateboarder, really uh, great artist as well. Really old, <coughs> turns 100 next, uh, next year. But so you can have, uh, uh, you can add something to it. You know, it's a physical piece of uh, paper and uh, you can do what you want. Well, we're here capturing life, but this is basically my, my life. You know, like um, uh, dull moments or moments that happen. You can only take these pictures or a lot of these pictures if you have a camera around your neck, you know, be always ready for the unexpected to happen. And sometimes I don't take a photo at all, sometimes take, I take a lot. But, and if, if any of you take photos, you know if you don't bring your camera, you're like, fuck, you know, like, uh, sorry, excuse my uh, English. Like, but you think that uh, in, in some kind of uh, way. Um, like, oh, I wish I had my camera, this would be a great moment. And you, all you have is your memory, which is also really great. And the best camera is the one you have with you. So on the contrast uh, left, I shot uh, 
few days ago and on the right uh, uh, 20 years ago, at, at least. As you can tell, the left is uh, pretty outdated. Not only people change, but also uh, uh, cars and uh, electronics change. So, and I think, I, I always find that very interesting because you can really date stuff by looking at the cars. If you, sh you shoot street stuff, you're looking at the cars. And, and some people only uh, uh, these days go for it, like, oh, shoot all the cars or all the stuff. And uh, it's like, but over time, these cars are also old and it dates you exactly to this uh, day and age. And not like uh, bring back the car. I love old cars, like the way they look. But um, if you put them in, in, in this day and age, and you only focus on these points, you kind of forget uh, the, the era you, you live in. Well, I went to Tampa and I, uh, I, sh I shot uh, the most famous uh, 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 competition in, uh, in the world. It's, it's not really skateboarding, it's not really competition. Uh, they, they, do comp they have competitions, but everybody's cheering, cheering for the one who's doing the best. It's no, no uh, envy or nothing, you know, like people are generally uh, stoked, even uh, uh, on the Olympic uh, Games. Uh, I, heard, uh, I heard some podcasts with uh, other uh, 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 athletes and they were like, I don't get it, you know, like uh, somebody uh, was applauding for their competition and uh, well, that, 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 this is our, our scene, you know, everybody is um, uh, really stoked that you do something that you were not maybe didn't think you were capable of, you know, like it's a support and then uh, it's an inspiration, hopefully, to do something and exceed your uh, own abilities. Well, but, you know, like uh, capturing real life, please look at your surroundings, like left and right, you know, like uh, before you know it, you, you, you miss like maybe uh, the reflection in the window and, um, Well, these are samples. Uh, I shot this actually uh, uh, two days ago. But it's uh, what, what we see here in the city uh, a lot of times, uh, uh, fast pacing uh, fat bikes. And this as well, like uh, uh, these are uh, two days old, these, these uh, photographs. And it's kind of nice, the imperfection of the, the Polaroid uh, photographs. Um, it adds something. Uh, uh, yeah, a, a different detail. I did not expect this at all, but it was cold and, you know, like uh, cold weather and, and, and film. Uh, you have to be a little bit wary. We, we'll, we'll see uh, the ones who go on the workshop, we'll, we'll see uh, uh, some results of that. I always put it under my arm so it's, it's away from light and it's warm. But, you know, it, it has a slightly uh, older uh, feeling, so ice skating and... Uh, But not only people, but you can uh, have uh, other subjects and, and, and define uh, a nice moment in, uh, in life. And I like, I like details. I like the way that uh, it's backlit from uh, his ear uh, over here. But real life is also, uh, especially in, in with Polaroid photos, you know, like it's everything around you, your family, your friends. Um, that's perfect for that. But the, with the new i2 camera, it's, uh, it's really great because you have uh, multiple exposures. You can have uh, uh, double, triple, and quadruple exposures. So here's my, uh, my son on the right and my nephew uh, on the left. Um, it, it opens up possibilities to, have, to, to make something special. And like I said before, these are original ones and I really like these. Uh, 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 the fact that you have something very special. I mean, you don't know uh, what the outcome will be, and it's very tricky, and if, we, uh, if some of you tried to do this or have tried this before, uh, you know you, you, the outcome is unexpected. And I like that. I like to be surprised. But you can have uh, quadruple uh, exposures as well.
And this, we, this is shot in uh, <coughs> the skate park in uh, North, the one on the right here. We go there uh, later. Well, there's another uh, uh, not really common uh, way to shoot uh, instant photography. And, uh, and my friends uh, have a band uh, called uh, Ploegedienst. And I was like, uh, I'll document the whole, uh, the whole concert. Um, with my Polaroid camera. And it's, it's kind of uh, um, challenging because there's eight films in a, in a pack, uh, eight photos in a pack. You have to change it, and there's a lot of people, there's a lot of stuff going on. And it's, it's, it can be wild, and it's pretty funny uh, uh, to me. And I really like the result, but uh, like I said before, you can combine a lot of uh, images to obtain one uh, final result. So, I shot the whole concert, uh, uh, left and right like this, while changing film and uh, in the dark. It's, uh, I shot it on the 680, it's, it's kind of tall. I'll, uh, I'll show you the camera. So, this is the SX-70, which is great. It's a foldable camera, it fits in your pocket. Really old one, but this is the extensive version of it, but it has a flash and a sonar uh, out of focus, which is really great for if you want to uh, shoot something in the dark. But it's also really delicate, especially if uh, everybody's jumping on and on you, bouncing onto you. And of course, we have the ones I shot actually the multiple exposure with. It's, it's the new one. Really like this one. It's very. It doesn't fit in your pocket, but you can. Uh, have some fashion accessory, accessory. But this is uh, uh, real moments uh, as well, and uh, I, I like to, uh, I like to shoot uh, pieces of people too. You know, like uh, it's, it's not only, uh, it's not only the, f sorry, it's not only the face. It's uh, it, it, people are more than the f just their faces. Other parts of their body will define uh, uh, t their identity. So this is all work in progress. I, had, um, um, I shot a few portraits um, of people with uh, 100 plus Polaroids. And it's, it, this is just a work title, but the whole process is, um, it takes a while. Uh, so normally if I shoot somebody's portrait, it's, um, yeah, you know, it's an in instant moment. It's, it's a split second. You can take a few. But in this case, I wanted to create an image uh, with uh, uh, multiple uh, Polaroids. And it took me an hour and a half each. And you get, I get really close, and it's an intimate way uh, of, of showing um, <coughs> a person as a whole. So here we are. Uh, this is just one collective uh, image. But as it takes, takes uh, really long, it looks better uh, in, in real life, like most of the stuff, uh, like I said, you can touch paper. And, uh, but it's a, it's a different way of, of, of shooting a portrait. And because it takes so long, you get the different uh, motions and reactions of, of the, the person. And I like to play around with, uh, with the, the shutter speed and with motion blur or out of focus. Um, well, that's, uh, that's about it, I would say. Like a million photos <laughs> further. I have a lot of questions for you, um, but I wanted to start with um, going back a little bit. Um, what came first, photography or skating? Um, well, uh, skateboarding, but I always had an affection with, with photography. Yeah. But I always felt like it was uh, out of reach because um, at that time I, uh, I thought uh, I need to have the best camera in the world to be able to, be, to take good pictures. Yeah. But that's not true. Oh. I've taken my uh, best photos with the so-called shittiest cameras uh, there are, you know, like the, there's no such thing. As yeah. 
It's not the materials, what, what you make. It's what you it. do with it, yeah. yeah. And the person behind the camera. I think that's also something that mm. I really enjoyed uh, looking at your pictures, is that nice um, what you see, you, you photograph so many uh, different people, you see a lot of different faces, but what you actually see is the relationship you build with these people. So it's also a reflection of you, I would say. Yeah, and I, and, and I know these, these people, and if, even if I just met them, I, I'm very, uh, fairly... Uh, Quickly acquainted to yeah, uh, yeah, you stuff. can see that. Yeah, I don't mind to uh, to Come get close. in there yeah. <laughs> with your camera. Was like Gonzo yeah. uh, journalism, but <laughs> oh, that's uh, something else. Um, so when you're uh, when you're shooting um, uh, skateboarders, are you skating yourself at the same time, or do you come with your camera and you decide, okay, today I'm gonna gonna photograph, or you do both at the same time? Both. Yeah. I always bring my skateboard yeah. in, and um, no, I really like to because sometimes uh, yeah, no, I really like to to to, to skate, and sometimes uh, people are warming up, and then uh, I'm skating as well, and then I'm warmed up, and then it's like, Marcel, I'm ready, and I'm like, fuck, you know, I can't really, I don't really want to stop now, you know? yeah, like, yeah, I just yeah. want to continue skateboarding, and um, even at some point. Uh, Oh, poor, poor friend of mine. I was trying this trick, and he's like, "Yeah, I really want to do this trick." It's like, "Oh, let me land, land this trick," and he was like bugging me the whole time. And then, and at some point, I couldn't land my trick, and I focused my board, which I, you know, I broke it, threw it in the bushes, and I'm like, uh, "Okay, let's go." But he was super intimidated. <laughs> but that was really, it wasn't really uh, my plan. It was yeah. just like, if I don't break my board, I, I can't stop. You know, like uh, so. So I broke my <laughs> so board, broke threw it, it in the bushes, <laughs> okay. and, uh, wow. and sorry, sorry, Tommy, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't meant for you. It was meant for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when you're um, when you're shooting, um, there are so many different factors, right? Like, so you have composition, you have lights, uh, then there's a moving <coughs> person, and then you're also trying to not get hit, either your camera or you. So how do all these things? come together, like how do you decide, especially when you do Polaroid, when you shoot Polaroid, it's that feeling like you have one shot, this digital you can take, like you can do burst, right? So uh, I don't, I never do that. Okay. But I only do yeah. that if I want to capture the whole trick. Yeah, okay. So if you see some, uh, feel free to touch uh, all these books. We call it the sequence, but then you capture the whole, uh, the whole trick. But ah, if like I shoot one still photo, I sh only shoot one, one picture. Yeah. I never shoot bursts. I, I know yeah. the exact moment. That's why I said, like, uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you're not really a, a skateboarder and you want to do the, 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 all the, the trick shots and stuff, it's, it's really hard because you don't know the exact right moment. And sometimes I don't even look, I listen. Yeah. And I hear the, 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 the tail pop and then I know... Uh, like a split second later yeah. where to take the picture. That's actually in, um, interesting because uh, I shot a, uh, a skater once and I was like, yeah, this picture is cool, the light is nice, the angle, and then it's like, yeah, but you don't see what I'm doing. So there's a, yeah. uh, there's a difference when you're a skater yourself, right? Uh, Skateboarder in the air is so hot right now. Like, yeah. uh, we, we, we call it like that because if you see it in the newspaper and stuff, like most of the times, and it's most most of the times it's a bill, like it's it's not make trick, you know, the board's flying somewhere and then yeah. the person is up in the air yeah. and everybody's oh great, skateboard. Uh, but you can see that it's not done by Yeah, no, yeah, the skateboard we go like fuck man. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually curious, the, the photo you showed us um, where the guy's in the back doing a doing a trick uh, and in the front there's someone on a bicycle, so you oh, can yeah. see. Was there anyone who recognized the trick? Yes? <laughs> Bijna. Je bent wel close. Wie? Ja, yeah. Peck Smith. Maar dat was almost the same. Uh, uh, it's almost the same. But if you look really closely, on the, maybe not on the big screen, but if you see the photograph, you, you can tell uh, it's definitely <laughs> Beck Smith. Cool. Well done. <laughs> um, so, how do you, um, when you're shooting, how do you? come close, you come very close to the people, but also you also have to make sure you're not in people's way. So how do you, how do they, um, uh, they find it okay to be in their way, right? Because they're also yeah. doing their thing. So is it, is, can it be distracting or how do you move around when you're, when you're shooting? Well, it depends. Sometimes, you know, if I use a fisheye lens, for instance, like uh, 
I'm really close. I'm like yeah. sometimes uh, this close. Yeah. And um, you don't get any board in your no, face. No, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. <coughs> the board in my the face, headphones. board in my camera. Once I get hit twice by the same uh, board because it ricocheted off my head and then it fell back on my head. <laughs> but <laughs> most of the times, and knock on wood, I don't get hit. It only happened yeah. um, not even a handful of times. Okay, like uh, okay. I'm really. Uh, not that next week I'm gonna get hit for sure. Like I, I jinxed it. <laughs> but uh, the, the, most of the skateboarders are comfortable with it, and and the ones that don't know me, and I, I I get to know them on the spot or something. You know, they might be a bit wary that I'm that close. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they get uh, used to it. It's like it's like worry about uh, your stuff. I worry yeah, about yeah, mine. Exactly. And, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, I will be fine. Yeah, <laughs> my flashes get hit all the fucking time. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. all the time. I think I think you guess. I mean, it's too late now. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, sorry. Um, so you um, you travel a lot. Um, you meet all these uh, skaters from different parts of the world. Do you see what are the similarities and what and are there any differences? For example, here, if we want to skate, I can just go to a shop and buy a skateboard, and we have skate parks here. There are many places in the world where it's not easy to have access to, for example, skateboards, and, or even places where um, there are no um, skate parks. Um, what do you see, like what are the similarities and what are the differences between these communities? Well, th th there's a lot of, uh, even uh, Skatistan, for instance, they bring skateboards to uh, Afghanistan and they yeah. have, uh, they built a skate park there. Yeah. And uh, there's multiple uh, of these, uh, 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 institutions right now, or how do you call it, uh, uh, like that, that help uh, other places where they don't have access to yeah. all this stuff because a skateboard is not uh, very cheap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know what. what, what, what I was just curious um, if you see differences within the communities because you also told us that. Um, doesn't matter where you're from, or the, like it's one big family, right? But yes. then there are different challenges in different places of the world. So the of skating course. makes you, um, uh, you know, be one family, but you also see things that are maybe different. Yeah, of course. But, or maybe the challenges of finding spots or police that is hunting you. Yeah, uh, both. Are you actually <laughs> allowed here in the Netherlands to just skate on the street? Yeah, no, not everywhere. Oh yeah, okay. Because it's not only the streets, we we find stuff everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's what I saw. Like so now, I'm gonna look very different at um, I don't know how to call it in English. But in the but states, uh, for instance, it's a it's a liability to skate on schoolyards and stuff. And, oh yeah. Uh, so you have to climb a, a four meter high fence. Oh wow. <laughs> uh, all your stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. It's 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 tricky. <laughs> Even though the the biggest professionals uh, they do that. Yeah. You know, like, uh, are there any questions um, in the room? Yeah, oh, okay, thanks. Um, how did you come up with the name Fluff, Fluff Magazine? Yeah, that's an inside joke. <laughs> I, get that, I get that question uh, quite a lot. And uh, I never told anybody. <laughs> so I'm not going to either uh, right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyone else? A question from the audience? No questions? Okay, I, I still have a lot for you. Um, okay, so you made your work out of your hobby, right? This is, this is what you do for, for life and for, for love and for life, I would yeah. say. Um, and how do you combine this when, for example, you get a, a gig from a, a commercial client um, because your work is so real and very authentic, so how do you find a balance when uh, you need to shoot something when basically someone is paying you for it? D do you feel a difference or do they hire you because of uh, how both. you work? Uh, uh, they hire me be because they know what I do. Uh, well, it takes a while before, uh, you know, like in the beginning, uh, they, they show you photos like, I oh, want you to, show, to, to take this photograph. And I'm thinking like, well, ask the person that, take that took that photograph. Don't ask me, you know, hire that person. But then again, I'm uh, thinking like, okay, this, this, this much money, <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. You know, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't put my name next to it, but uh, yeah, I yeah. can copy it. 
But on the side of these shoots, <coughs> I, uh, I, I carry uh, either a Polaroid camera or, or something yeah. else, and uh, I shoot the pictures that I really want to take. Yeah. And then sometimes uh, they like those pictures even better yeah. Yeah. than th their actual idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. But I always take pictures. Yeah. So I like the pictures on the side, even though the, the, the one shot is, you know, yeah. the shot and it's... Yeah, like yeah. Uh, that maybe actually that's when you get <coughs> the magic shot, when it's, when, when it's off camera. For sure. Yeah. Oh, th those are definitely my uh, favorite moments. Yeah. So the, I don't really like the, 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 the more staged stuff. ones. Yeah. yeah. You have a lot of cameras. Um, uh, when do, how do you decide when you want to use uh, the instant photography, the Polaroids? Uh, I think I said it in the presentation as well. It's, it's because I wanted something direct, and I thought it was it was a raw feel of uh, analog photography, and it's 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 instant. It was right there and then, you know, yeah. like and you have something to hold and yeah. you have something to show, and uh, well, it's a different feeling. Yeah, it's it's completely yeah. different feeling, and it, you know, it's it's touchable. Yeah. And do you also give away your pictures, or you keep everything? Yeah, no, I give away photos as well. And sometimes yeah. it's a trade-off. Eh? I can uh, take somebody's picture, and then I was like, I'll take two. You know, I'll take one for me, yeah. and I'll keep one, and I'll yeah. give the other one uh, to the other person. Yeah. So that's mostly, sometimes it crosses a, a bridge of like, oh, I don't know, like, uh, can I take your photos? Like, oh, I'll give you one. Yeah, exactly. It's also a way, like, it's also a way to make connections, right? Maybe if you don't know someone yet, uh, bringing a Polaroid can like really oh, break the ice. For sure. Two days ago, I shot the, the pictures from the ice, yeah. and uh, everybody was already really intrigued by. Uh, I was like, "Oh, you take it with a Polaroid camera? Yeah. That's so nice." Yeah. You know, like, uh, it's a, a conversation starter. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I kept all those photos, by the way. Yeah, you didn't give them to. No. <laughs> um, I'm honest. Okay, so you have so many uh, Polaroids, and you capture the the skate community. Um, why is it important for you to archive um, uh, your, I would say, your people? <laughs> That's right, your wow. community. Why is it important for you to, to do that through photography? Yeah, at the point, uh, in the beginning, that, well, <coughs> there was not, not anybody, uh, uh, when I started, there was not anybody uh, documenting the stuff yeah. we did. And uh, I felt like we missed out on, on so much stuff. And uh, so, so when, when I bought the camera of my, my friend, I instantly uh, started making a, a zine to the photocopy place. And I published uh, my own stuff straight away. I gave it, yeah. gave it away for free because I know my demographic is, uh, is uh, broke, <laughs> cheap, or has to pay for expensive skateboard. So most of these uh, um, we, we gave away as well, you know? Like, yeah. uh, it, it, it's, it, has a, it has a label with a price because if you if you if you label it for free, the, the, the zines are labeled for free. But then I realized like uh, people pick up stuff for free because it's free, yeah. and it's, uh, you know it loses all value. And you you, you know like uh, just pick it up because you know oh it's free. I'll take yeah, it, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, uh, and, uh, but it's fluff free? No. Uh, not well, uh, we had a, a, a not not maybe not the the, the special editions maybe, but we yeah. gave it to the skate shops for free. And they could sell it. Okay. And we didn't oh, ask wow. money for to the skate shops because yeah. they're also like a struggling uh, 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 thing in the, yeah. in the in the skateboard community, and they're a really important part of the community yeah. versus the online uh, business. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's the worst wow. uh, business. My my accountant doesn't get it, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I it's think it's important. But but like um, if you put a price on it. They gave it away as well, but some some sold sold it for 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 a certain price. Yeah. But if you label it for, uh, with a price, uh, you, you tell it it's free. Yeah, it's it's more special to take to 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 have instead of just grabbing like uh, put a bunch yeah, on, yeah. Uh, on the de yeah. desk and like hey it's free and you find it around the corner maybe uh, yeah. on the floor because it's free and then like flip through it ah, I don't care you just chuck it, it out away. yeah that's a shame. Any questions? Yes. In the back.
can also see how photography maybe changes with the fact that the sport may be getting, um, is being perceived differently because it's now like also an Olympic sport? Well, yeah, good question. Uh, I don't know, to be honest, because um, uh, I know they use uh, proper skate photographers in the Olympic Games. Uh, not like the, the, the normal uh, sports journalist. Uh, um, yeah, we just have to wait and see, I guess, and how, how that will be perceive, uh, perceived. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's definitely curious. Uh, I'm curious to watch that uh, aspect. I only thought about the skateboarding part, so you put something else in my head that might, yeah, that might change. But hopefully not. Uh, hopefully, um, the, the, uh, what we have spreads out to the to the people who come in there because it's it's a sport, and maybe they get uh, 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 intrigued by the fact that uh, it's not only a sport. You know, like uh, well, in my book, it's 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 not a sport, but um, yeah, maybe it opens their minds to other possibilities as well. And yeah, let, let's see how the photography uh, turns out. So the only people crossing finish lines and stuff, maybe, like the hands in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Hopefully not. But Hopefully not. Hey, it could, uh, you, you never know uh, what to expect, so maybe it's... We it's don't know what to expect, but um, you've been doing this for 20, 20 years? Yeah, okay. I think I started in, in 99, I think. Um, what have you? What kind of developments did you see in all these years in both uh, the skate community and um, and photography? Well, or do you feel it's, it's still the, it's maybe it's still the same? The heart is still the same. I think mm. in both in photography and, and yeah. skateboarding. I think the, the essence is is still the same. Yeah. And, and maybe I go out on a limb here, but maybe uh, it's even more uh, creative because. Uh, uh, there's, there's people are less bound in this day and age by, by rules and, and, and yeah. maybe appearances and stuff and they can do uh, whatever they want and which is, in, in, which is yeah. great because that's what we always And it wasn't like that anyway. 20 years ago it, Was that different? You no, it's, it's, it, it's different, it's yeah. like uh, real life Yeah You know, like uh, society changes yeah. and uh, uh, everything changes and I think it's f uh, for the better Less rules for what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Yeah. Well, that's a good lesson. Um, how much time do I have left? Okay, I have time. Um, your your books. Oh, no, I have to say magazines actually. Yeah, it's a magazine um, in disguise. They are, uh, you know, they are an art piece on itself. Uh, and you already said like, yeah, you didn't want to repeat yourself. But what what is what is the reason that every uh, magazine is so different? And do you work with different people, or is this all you? No, <coughs> it's me and uh, uh, my other half, uh, Marco uh, from 5890. We, we started this uh, in, in 2000, I think. And I don't know. Uh, I don't really want to... Uh, I grew up with uh, a magazine called Big Brother, and they, they changed uh, covers and slightly formats all the time. And I thought it was so great because you never really uh, know what to uh, expect. Know what yeah. to expect. We we took it to another level, but uh, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah it, it's it's great. And when people yeah. ask me, it's like, hey, when? And sometimes we we make an issue, and uh, it takes years for another issue. But we also made an issue once, and then two weeks later we put out another one. Yeah, because you make it yourself. You're just in charge of when you make it. Yeah, and, and when, we have, comes when we have an idea or uh, something like that. So the last yeah. one is, uh, I think, dates. It's from 2018, maybe. So it's quite a while. But then we oh, have okay. COVID and stuff. So a new one is coming up. We have a, uh, there's actually a new one in the works, yeah. Okay, good. Cool. Um, so, uh, some of the students are going to go with you to the skate park in Nord. And, um, yeah, because the floor is wet. That's yeah, wet. yeah, because it's, yeah, it's not a good day to skate outside. It's Today. January in Holland. Yeah. And, um, 
and it's also extremely cold. Um, cold is okay, but if it's wet, yeah. then uh, if the floor is wet, then uh, yeah, it's not good for your skateboard. Yeah, it's not good for you either. So you go indoors, um, and I was wondering, what would you, um, if you if you go, for example, to a skate park, you go to North, and you're with a you're with a group. Everyone has cameras, uh, and there's people that are skating there because they want to skate. They're not necessarily there to um, th they're first idea was not let's go skate so someone can photograph me. So how do you approach, um, what advice can you give to people that want to uh, shoot skaters um, when you come with your camera? Ask. Mm. Like uh, yeah. if, you, if you just stand on the sideline, and some, uh, even if you catch skateboarders like uh, in the street, they, they're usually filming or taking pictures themselves. And yeah. if you, uh, if you, you have no idea for what, they're working maybe on a new film or yeah. a new project for a, for a book or a magazine or something, just ask. And yeah. uh, sometimes they say yes, and it's like uh, real people. You know? Sometimes yeah, they say yes, and sometimes <laughs> they say no. Skaters are actually real people. Um, <laughs> no, but just, just uh, I'll just ask. Yeah, yeah, that's a good advice. And then straight up, and then you can have no or yes. You know? Yeah. Any other questions from the audience? Jan? Um, it's okay, I can also. No, can you <laughs> use the microphone for the recording? Um, <laughs> yeah, I have uh, kind of two small questions. Uh, one, if you trace back over the last, well, you said since 1999, um, so 24 years, what would yeah. you say was 25. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I went with my age because I was born in 99, so... Are you born in 99? <laughs> ah, yeah. So I went with my age. I was clear, I'm, you know, 25... Holy shit, your whole months, life. So. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I wanted to ask, if you trace back over the last 25 years, um, where would you say was your big break? And would you say that your progression was very natural? Or would you say that there was a key moment that really pivoted, pivoted your career to what it is today? Huh. Good question. Um, in the beginning, when I, when I uh, took photography more serious, uh, I really tried to have like my, my own stamp on stuff. And then uh, maybe too forcefully at points. And I just let that go at, at one moment because I was like, oh, you know, I look at all these photographers and they have their really, their, their, their trademark, their autograph in a, in, a, in a photograph. And I just let that go. I was like, ah, I can never achieve that. And then it happened naturally uh, over time. So I think you, you just have to let it go. And I don't know exactly when or where that happened. Uh, I think over time. But I think when, when people tell me like, oh yeah, I recognize your photos, uh, I knew it was you. I was like, okay, that's maybe the biggest compliment uh, I have, but I don't know an exact moment. I think I have all these, <coughs> breaks and then you know like it, especially if you're uh, your uh, um, your own boss you know like on a roller coaster you know you have a big break and a deep blow and it goes like like this so um, all directions but yeah i don't i don't really know when when that happens i think over time cool and just second question um you saw a lot of your photos in, in your presentation um, and some of them were black and white, some of them were color, uh, especially with film as well, being able to choose both black and white and color film. Would you say there's a, a, a decision that's made before you put the film in the camera whether you want to shoot black and white that day or is there like a creative decision when you're going into that process? Is yeah. There a, is there and like a character that black and white gives you? Yeah, and you know, sometimes uh, I have, if I, for instance, have a, a, a color or a black and white film in it, and the moment itself uh, presents uh, uh, for the different film, I have ripped out film for my camera and, uh, uh, or the, the Polaroid camera, and then, you know, I'll forget about, and with Polaroid camera, you can take out the cartridge and your first, there's one photo that's, uh, that's fucked, Let, let's put it like that. But the other one's quite fine, so you can you can change that. But I have done it with uh, with different cameras, and sometimes I even have two cameras if I if I just as different situations. But I, yeah, it just also uh, goes with uh, feeling of uh, of the time and maybe of the day. Uh, 
It's like uh, listening to a certain uh, genre of music. You know, sometimes you feel like this, and sometimes you feel like that. I, I think I feel the same way with uh, shooting uh, black or white, uh, black and white, or uh, color. If it's film, and if it's digital, for instance, I know exactly if the if the, the picture should be color or black and white, like instant. Like there's no doubt about it. And I. I hate the question when people uh, ask me, it's like, oh, I love your photo, the photo's great. Can you send me the color version? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I get, I get it all the time, eh? like, uh, oh man, this photo's amazing. Like, uh, please send me the color version. I'm like, why? He just told me the photo was great, you know? Like, uh, so you say no. <laughs> well, sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Depends if they pay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so I also saw um, your work, for example, you were shooting the Tour to de France. Also. Yeah. yeah um, and um, I was wondering your approach, your way of photographing, the connections you make with people, um, makes you a different type of photographer than we usually see when when people when we look at like sports photographers. So how would you say your work methods, um, your, your skateboard background, how does that influence uh, your work when you're doing, for example, um, yeah, shooting uh, bikers, cyclists? Well, I, I did it the same way. I, I wasn't really gunning for uh, uh, the action itself, but just, yeah. just, just of the surroundings. And in the beginning, they, they really uh, didn't like me. Some people didn't talk to me for, I was, I was for instance, oh. I was in that point, I was with uh, Lotto Jumbo, uh, embedded. And I could go anywhere where I wanted, you know, like uh, uh, hotel rooms. Uh, I mean, even have a picture laying under the massage table uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the cars or in the... I, I could go anywhere. And, yeah. and they were really, really... Uh, they didn't like me. They, they, they <coughs> acted like I didn't exist. But uh, over a couple of days, they realized what I was shooting. Yeah. And I, was, I wasn't there to... Uh, um, uh, to put them down, you know, like I'm not like some some gossip journalist or something. Yeah. I wasn't even a journalist. I was there to make a book, and um, uh, on the cover of some shitty newspaper, like uh, with some knife for uh, and with the headline saying like, "Whoa," you know, and to destroy a person. I was there yeah. to document their lives, you know, like yeah. and uh, even the odd moments when somebody's crying in the back of the uh, bus, and uh, I took a picture and they. And then they closed the curtain and later they said sorry because I uh, showed them, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm here to document your life and there's, there's, there's no highs with lows. You yeah. know, it's, 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 it's everything combined that makes you uh, do, these, uh, do, do these efforts. And I, yeah. I, I take that in, uh, in all aspects uh, of yeah. what I'm, I'm shooting. Yeah. So, so they warmed up to you eventually. Yeah. They did, and yeah. even the guy who was the the, 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 the gnarliest to me, I didn't, I, th I don't <laughs> think he spoke to me for at least ten days. Not even in the hallway, not even uh, hello. Uh. And at one point, they put him, they put me in his car, and he he just talked to me like I wasn't there, like oh I can't have this, like really gnarly, like I was like oh man, oh. I'm like, this sucks, you know, like uh, <laughs> I can imagine. But, uh, somehow uh, uh, the ice broke because I can only be one person. I can only be me, yeah. and uh, I can only uphold uh, an appearance for like a minute, and then. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, you know, we had a. I was there in the car, and that that takes like eight hours or something. So I was in his car for like eight hours, and then we approached Paris days later. Uh, uh, this person uh, said like, "Oh, Marcel's in my car," and like the whole crew was like. Huh? What? <laughs> what did you do to France? I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, I was just uh, I was like, oh, you can be, in. and that's the most prestigious uh, uh, ride yeah, to yeah. be in a following yeah, car yeah. to go to uh, the Champs Elysees, yeah. and, uh, and wow. then he dropped me off in the middle of the Champs Elysees. Uh. And then you have to find your way back. No, no, no. That was great because you know <laughs> I did a, I did one round. We went to Paris, did one ah, round, okay, okay, yeah. and I was like in between. Uh, all the, uh, the other uh, photographers with big ass big, cameras yeah, and I big was there lenses, with small, uh, yeah. uh, small you, cameras. You get a very different, people re respond to your camera so differently when you have a big camera or, oh, you hands know, down. Or, or a small camera or even Polaroids, you know, they respond different. For sure, so, and yeah. uh, the interaction with, with those different kinds of cameras are, yeah. are great. And uh, yeah. the Tour de France, for instance, I only shot it on my uh, Leica. 
yeah. And I, I brought a big uh, camera for the first day, and then I realized I couldn't really go uh, places. And with yeah. the, the other camera, they let me go everywhere, yeah. you know, like. Yeah. Uh, so I, I left those cameras. And yeah. the same with, uh, with Polaroid uh, photos. It's, it's, a, it's a different interaction. And I like yeah. shooting people. Yeah. So to put a, a, a camera in their faces, you know, like, uh, like the ones are pointing us uh, now, it's, it really, uh, you can't really miss these things. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. So then nothing can it about. And, uh, yeah. um, but with Polaroid uh, cameras, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice because... Yeah. They, they see something coming out and they see something special. It's not something they see uh, every day. Yeah, yeah. It's a different, it's a different feeling. Um, thank you, Marcel. Oh, my thank pleasure. you for, for, this, uh, for your presentation and your interview. Um, part of you, um, uh, the students are going with you to the um, skate park in North. And uh, for the students, there's a lunch downstairs in the, in the cafe. And uh, for the rest of you, thank you for coming. Um, and we hope to see you for the last edition um, for uh, the Foam and Polaroid series. You want to say something? Yeah, real yeah. quick. Is my mic on? Yeah. Um, if I can please have a show of hands of the people who are joining the workshop. So, so I can count. Um, one, oh. That's not a lot. One, two, three, four. okay. So we've got a lot of spots left. Um, so if anyone in this room uh, feels the need or wants to join the workshop, it's gonna be really fun in North. Um, we're gonna bike there with the group. And um, yeah, so there's still some spots left. If you wanna join, um, you can go to the cafe as well, have some lunch and then we'll all go. You can film on a camera. I filmed on the camera. To use. Yeah. Okay, thank you for coming. Oh, thank you.